How do you do? We are about to unfold the story of Frankenstein. He's one of the strangest tales ever told. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. Well, we've warned you. You've been warned. Welcome back to Frankenstein Minute, the podcast where we dissect the Universal Frankenstein films minute by minute. I'm Bill Evenson. And I'm Tom Lang. And we are on Minute 21. We're entering the lab. That's right. We come back in the room from yet another angle. Yes. Um, Not through the wall. No. But from an angle that we haven't seen before. So as I picture how this movie was made and the way movies generally seem to be made... If you've got a, a scene that takes place in a room, mm-hmm. and then you've got another scene later that comes, they come back to that room, you don't move the camera into the other room and then move it back. You film all the scenes shoot, in that yeah, room everything all on at the, once. On the, first, on the one location, yes. And presumably that's how they did this too. Yeah. But they move the camera every time. Yeah, it's, it's you know, unlike something like Dracula, uh, a lot of the early talkies that are very stagey, nail, mm-hmm. the, nail the camera in place, not a lot of movement. Yeah. This this film moves yeah. quite a bit, you know, from using a crane, which, granted, there's some crane and tracking shots in Dracula, uh, mm-hmm. to be fair. Uh, there's really actually quite a spectacular crane shot in it, uh, but... I was wondering if you're going to mention Spanish Dracula at that point. Well, there's also, yeah, there's a really <laughs> nice crane move in, in the Spanish Dracula. Yeah, it's like the most famous shot in Spanish Dracula, yeah, I think. Yeah, Whale cuts a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, has a lot of uh, coverage is the term. Yeah. Um, yeah, so moving this camera around is not a very efficient way to make a movie. No, it's, it's not. It's the term I've heard uh, is setups. Like how, yeah. many setups how many setups can setups? you get done yeah. in a day or whatever. Yeah. And he's just got a bunch of setups. Well, he went about 12 days over schedule. Okay. Because. I, I picture it being a situation where he, like us, looks at this room and just is in love with it. Right. And decides to, we're oh, gonna we cover- shoot it. this shot's got to be like this. Yeah, we're going to cover this thing. Thing. I mean, it was, I'm sure, a very expensive set. Mm-hmm. It's huge. It's huge. But dwarfed by the same set in the sequel, mm-hmm. which is even huger, if that's a word. He knows what he likes. Yeah, yeah. But no, he, he it's, yeah, it's very visually interesting with all the, diff- the walls are at different canted angles. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the door and the window are really the only straight upright things. And there's a beam that runs through the center of it that's upright. Mm-hmm. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, the walls are all at tilted angles. We got painted shadows on the walls from the windows. You know, again, like a very um, expressionist. Caligari, thing. Caligari, yeah. yeah. But um, not quite so much. But there's that well, famous photo of of uh, standing in. I don't know if it's in this room. I hope it's famous or else we're going to be a long podcast where he's standing there and then you can see the window off in the distance and you really see how weird this room yeah. is. Do you know the one I'm talking about? Right. <laughs> I do know. There's, there's, okay. a, there's a series of them. And yeah. I'm not sure if it's this room or if it's the uh, the cellar that comes later. That makes more sense. I think it is that. And, and you, you did mention his name, so we'll, just bleep, oh, we'll bleep it out. Thank you. I'll bleep it out. <laughs> <laughs> we can leave this in. Yeah, we'll leave this stuff in, but out. I'll bleep it out. For those who are uninitiated. Good old Bela. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. You know, when they, when they walk in, Elizabeth is looking around, mm-hmm. up and around, just can't believe what she's seeing. This is, it, this, when he sent me this letter saying, I'm staying in an abandoned old watchtower, and I pictured it, pictured the worst. Yeah. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, it's squalor. Yeah. And yeah, there's. It's, it's a mess. There's, there's stuff everywhere. Yeah. Uh, earlier when he goes to the window. To see who's there, you can see there's little three or four little steps leading up to the window, which is a nice touch. And there's stuff piled in the corner of each step. You know, there's things everywhere. And you've got to imagine, he's been dealing with lots and lots of dead tissue. It probably doesn't smell the best in there. <laughs> Something that never really gets discussed, but it can't be. Oof. It's not the cleanliest environment. And the floor is wood. Oh, so. You ever get like a dead mouse stuck in the wall? Oh that's yeah! Your house? Oh yeah! Ooh. That's, that's that. It's got to be worse than that. I would think so. Oh my goodness! I hadn't thought yeah. about that. Yeah. Plus Fritz. Plus Fritz. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta imagine he doesn't smell the best. His hygiene <laughs> habits are in question. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I noticed Fritz kind of scoots off into the corner. Yeah, he does. Like 
when I want that's what I noticed watching this minute by minute yeah. stuff like that like oh look yeah, what the, Fritz the is little, doing he's little, just yeah. game, scurrying off scurrying off yeah, yeah he sort of scuttles about anyway so, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's right yeah. and he's gonna he's gonna like he's got the he's got the uh, read of the room and he knows how it's gonna go and yeah. I'm gonna be over here I'm in the just, corner I'm just gonna get out of the way <laughs> get the fuck out of here yeah. um, <laughs> another thing I noticed is uh is the soundtrack to this minute is or at least at the beginning for sure is thunder yeah like thunder is a big part of the soundtrack mm -hmm. of this movie it is yeah yeah um yeah and it continues throughout the scene unless there's dialogue and it kind of mm -hmm. just kind just of conveniently, kind of conveniently stops which yeah. you know it's a contrivance but it you know otherwise we wouldn't know what the hell they're saying yeah um, true yeah yeah so elizabeth is is amazed waldman is is very curious yeah. And John Bowles is John Bowles. Bowles is there as well. <laughs> sort of, he's there. He's in the scene. <laughs> he is in it. He That's is in true. the scene. Yeah. Are uh, you in it? Uh, he's, got, uh, he's got you he there. He does have me there. Yeah. I am not in it. <laughs> Much as I would like to have been. Yeah, I am cool. not. Yeah. Um, so he's going to take unusual precautions. He um, is. I noticed that uh, since since he was called crazy, mm -hmm. he he's now become sort of intimidating and theatrical. Yes. He's, he's almost sinister. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, and they all kind of when he locks the door, they're all facing into the lab, looking around. They hear him shut and lock the door, and everybody turns mm -hmm. with a little start, and are, are surprised to see them locking, to see him locking them in. Mm -hmm. um, and this is my my next question: Is yeah. he locking them in? Why is he locking the door? Is he locking out prying eyes, yeah. or is he locking them in? That's... Why is he locking the door at all? Yeah, because it's not like, you know, the neighbor's going to come by to, to borrow a cup of sugar. <laughs> you know? Well, well, and, you know, he well. talks about prying eyes. He talks about unusual precautions. I think there's a line in the Flory script, which kind of gives you a level of uh, how the dialogue was, is that he has spy mania. Okay. Spy mania. Which, don't we all? Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm doing that kind of stuff, I don't, I don't like people yep. watching me yeah that, that makes sense i yeah. mean i guess yeah he's been up to some seriously weird business weird illegal immoral illegal immoral yeah. he's got it kind of covered so, there so yeah i think I'd, I'd be a little wary of prying eyes myself yeah. uh yeah that makes sense uh-huh there's an uh, iconic line in this move in this minute yes it's sit down oh yes this Which, is the first time you hear sit down, sit down. and i think he says it twice yeah, he says uh, it he twice. Says he it, says, sit down, please. Sit down, please. And he says, sit and down. Bowles does nothing, as yeah. per usual. Yep. And uh, <laughs> that's an interesting way of putting it. See, <laughs> yeah. I pictured it being, uh, he's polite to Bowles at first. Or he Victor. is polite. He is polite to Victor. Sit down, please. Sit down, please. And then he Victor just stands there like a stands jackass. Stands there like a dick. And, <laughs> like a dick. And, and so Henry stepped forward, leans into him. Yeah. And is, is very adamant. Sit down. M more intimidation yeah very sinister yeah, yeah. yeah and as as victor sits down you see there's a hat on a hook in the wall behind them and i'm wondering if it's the same mysterious hat from like minute three when they're in the graveyard where that hat <laughs> just followed disappear, by the hat. <laughs> just just appears out of nowhere on a, yeah. on, a on a stick in the ground in the in the wow. graveyard i like that callback because yeah, yeah just like then it's either Henry or Fritz, yeah. or it was there, right? And there's no other option There's here like a as hat well. and a scarf. It's so either, it's got to be Henry. Is it or... a scarf? I guess it is a scarf. I thought it was like a rag. Oh, or it something. might be a yeah, rag. I guess it's probably a scarf. Yeah. He was wearing a scarf in those. And at some a... point, wasn't he? Maybe I made yeah, that I up. I think in the sequel he does. Oh, okay, <laughs> that, that's they the go one out, I'm They go of. out for the night to see uh, Pretorius, and he has to dress warm. That's right. He tells him to dress, to dress warm. warm. <laughs> yes. Um, Getting ahead of ourselves. We are. But yeah, then, well, yeah, cause then he yells at him to sit down, mm -hmm. which he does, and then turns and very tenderly mm -hmm. says, Elizabeth, please. Yeah. You, you too, Elizabeth, please. Yep. Very, absolutely tender. Yeah. yeah. There is an exception to his yeah. mania. Right. And it's Elizabeth. Yeah. Well, he, he shows Waldman respect, but he is still very terse with him. Mm -hmm. Shows him some respect. He's very tender and, and, and genuine towards Elizabeth throughout, and supposedly victor's his best friend and all he does is yell, yell at each other oh yeah through the whole thing i think i think right, at least right now he's uh he's he really doesn't is pissed off about being called crazy yeah he just oh, went he crazy when yeah. he called him yes, crazy. yes he did <laughs> oh crazy i'll show you oh he crazy. went crazy all crazy. right gloves, here we here it is gloves are off vic Let's another go. thing I noticed, he says, uh, he says, a moment ago, and it's uh, it's almost like previously on Frankenstein, Frankenstein Minute, Frankenstein, like yeah. because for us personally, this is good, a good reminder. Yeah. Oh, that's, it was just a moment ago. It was ago. just a moment ago, not yeah. a week ago. 
<laughs> and then there's uh again the thunder i really like the way the thunder punctuates mm -hmm. uh fritz saying don't touch don't that. touch that <laughs> well you see while they're standing there while he's standing there and the other two are sitting fritz is kind of between the couch that victor and elizabeth are on and the chair that waldman will eventually sit in fritz is kind of peeking through them like he's he's not in the scene, but he is. You yeah. know, he's he's just like, ooh, this is gonna get good. Well, and it and it seems like um, so the uh, the the term I believe is blocking. Yes, where you where is. you set up that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. It's the the more I watch these early these early scenes, the more I'm convinced that Whale really is trying to stick Fritz in there. He loves yeah. him and he, he wants likes him Fritz. in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, he <laughs> used him. Poke your head through yeah, there. Yeah, he used him. You know, again, in uh, he's in the Invisible Man and he's in Bride. So mm -hmm. yeah, he clearly, yeah. you know, Dwight Fry fan. Dwight Fry fan. An early fan. Aren't we all, though? Yeah. Let's be well, honest. At this point. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually like him better in Bride. I think the character is... A little bit more little, fleshed out. Yeah, a little, a little bit more, more interesting. interesting. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't go that far. No? We might have to disagree on that. We'll agree. I like him in both. Really we'll we'll agree to disagree. No, let's agree to <laughs> yeah, disagree. Because okay. that's, you know, like a year away. Yes, so. that's true. we got time <laughs> we got to worry time about to that. we got time to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> i got time to calm down. You do? Yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sit down. It's all okay. It's okay. So now, the, the uh, uh, don't touch that, and we, we make our way over. Oh, well, first, though, before that, okay. um, you said a moment ago, you called me crazy. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't say tonight we'll see about that. He says tomorrow. Which we'll, is weird. Which is odd, yeah. It's why, definitely odd. Yeah. I've I, always wondered about why he says tomorrow versus tonight. Well, not to spoil it, not to be um not to increase the drama or anything but i have more to say about that next minute okay we'll, yeah. wait, we'll wait till the next minute <laughs> what's your theory or do you have a theory uh or you just think it's weird i think it's weird but my theory is that he's gonna he's thinking about asking them to get the fuck out ah. before he does it and he changes his mind he's like no this is great uh, I've got that is audience. interesting yes because because again he, we'll get he into hasn't that quite made up his mind about a few things yeah. yes over the next couple of minutes we yeah, get to we, see we henry see he goes through a lot decide yeah. how this is going to go yeah yeah, that's yeah. True. so think of what we can we can uh, delve deeper into that in the next minute because definitely have, again a theory about when he makes that shift yep because but, the next thing he does is insist that waldman is not to inspect that body right there's no way yep, he would away, ever yeah, yeah. let Valver right. inspect that body. Yep. You know, Fritz yells, don't touch that, and runs over. Henry, you know, turns and beats it over there quickly. Yeah. This uh, is important. Yeah, yeah it's do like, not... do what the yeah. hell, man? What do you think this is? Yeah. Yep. But I know how he feels, because, like, when I'm working on a, a sculpt or... Uh, painting something people like to touch things for some reason <laughs> and i don't understand why you know yeah i guess i could and, see that and and so I, I i get where he's coming from sure. or, you know besides i mean i'm not farting around with corpses so yeah i right. don't have that that sort of moral quandary but i understand don't touch my stuff yeah i'm in the middle of something that's here. mine yeah yeah <laughs> You like that? You'd like it more if you wouldn't touch it and let me finish it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And then when it's finished, you still can't touch it. Yes. So. <laughs> In this case, well, I guess we'll, we'll see yeah, how we'll this see one We'll see how goes. this one goes. Yeah. We'll see how it turns out. Right. Um, so we they, see a little bit more of the, uh, I noticed we see a little bit more of the, I noticed in the background um, behind Waldman where he's standing inspecting the body, there's a there's a mixing board. Sort of, yeah. yeah. Like an early 1931 yeah, strict fashion kind of incorporated to see mixing what they, board. Yeah, yeah, right. Is he's going to get his beats on. He's going to get his beats on later after after the thing comes to life. Is a big party. No, he, what no. are you saying? <laughs> when, the, the, when the creature comes to life, he's going to have a big party. And oh, I see. He's going to have, have, have a DJ. Yeah, yeah well, the, I'm sure that's how Fritz and uh, Henry relax. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that's how they unwind. With a little hip hop. <laughs> oh, I've had enough of all this monster business. <laughs> Fire it up. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, yeah, Fr uh, Fritz is running the, <laughs> definitely <laughs> running the kid, uh, yeah. whatever, yeah, turntables. Well, it's a neat, it's a, it's a new angle, like we talked about before, uh, slightly down angle mm -hmm. from a crane, I assume, because okay, that makes sense cause cause it, it moves, it, because and... the, the next shot in the next minute will, will move. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so you see a little more of the equipment behind the table, mm -hmm. or up, up stage of the, the table that the creature is on. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, yeah, it's an interesting composition. And again, Henry is very, he, he wants, you know, Baldwin to, to get the fuck away from it, but he's again, respectful. Yeah. I mean, Please doctor, I insist. Right. Very uh, polite. He doesn't, you know, bark at him like he does Victor. 
<laughs> but you know, Baldwin isn't a big slab of beef like that's Victor true. is. Either, <laughs> yeah, so. That's how you got to treat someone like Victor. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, well, he true, proves probably. it scene after scene. Yeah, that's true. You know, uh, he, he does nothing to for me to to look like. Oh yeah, he's his best friend. Yeah. Other than he shows some concern, but I think his concern is more how can I get him out of the picture so I can, you know, <laughs> mac on his fiance. That does seem to be a pretty accurate description of that character. <laughs> yeah. And his his uh, reason for being. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, now again, the scene in, in the Flory script, everybody talks and talks and talks and talks and talks and it's page after page and you're reading it like oh for god's sake throw the switch already yeah uh elizabeth isn't there so it doesn't have i think whale putting her in the scene gives it so much more depth yeah um and she's she's great i love may clark this is way beyond her comprehension but she's doing everything she can to to trust him to you know hear him out yeah her her support for him is such that she's willing to yeah, yeah, hear him out, as you say. Yeah. I'll give this a shot. Yeah, all right. Uh, and yeah, when you, it's interesting you talk about all the there talking, a there's a lot of, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of this minute in particular and a lot in, in, in these scenes in general where no one's talking, yeah. Yeah. The thunder is playing it mm -hmm. out. Yeah, no, and, and things are overly explained. There's a little bit more in the shooting script, too, that Whale pruned a little bit, or either in editing or when they were shooting, I'm not sure. Looks to me before they shot it, because mm -hmm. it's... Everything looks deliberate. It doesn't appear altered after the fact. Right. But yeah, and, and certainly in this scene is uh, in the play, the Balderston uh, play based on our, our dear friend Peggy Webling, whoever you are. Yeah. Um, this is where it starts. Okay. So it goes on and on and on with all of the backstory that the previous that makes sense, 20 right? minutes have, have led up to. Yeah, I guess it's been 20 minutes. Yeah. So, you know, that, that I can understand. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it carried over to to Flory's script, where it it's like five six pages of standing around talking, <laughs> and none of it is interesting. So, all right, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. Th at this point, we're um, we've already delayed the sort of uh, it's a delayed gratification of what oh, we yeah. come here to yeah, see. Yeah, it's, it's yeah the, the the big moment. You know, mm -hmm. we've got twenty minutes leading up to what you paid your I don't know what it would have been <laughs> five, five cents. cents or something. I mean, literally, might have been like five. I, cents. I, I don't know. you know. I know quarter? there's there's I could find out probably but was does like a quarter anybody really care <laughs> like when I was a kid a movie was a buck and a half right yeah yeah so yeah this is I'm not that old I wasn't seeing <laughs> wasn't movies around, in the 30s wasn't around in 1931 no so like, it might have been 50 cents 25 cents yeah like I, I think, think so I, I think my like, mom telling me that she'd have like 50 cents and that would cover for the whole day she'd have yeah, popcorn, she'd popcorn and, popcorn and, and yeah I don't know she's probably lying <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, my dad. I remember my dad saying something like that that you yeah. could, you know, you'd have like a, your allowance was fifty cents or whatever, and yeah, you could spend the whole embarrassment day. of riches. It was, yeah, you know? and and you know, you'd get a cartoon, you'd get newsreels, yeah, short subjects, things like that. And what cartoon oftentimes, would this have been? Uh, Thirty-one. I don't know. There would have been maybe some about? Mickey Mouse, Bosco, Bosco, uh, <laughs> Oswald, well, Universal. Oswald. Would, Universal. Would Universal send out a, a cartoon with the with the feature? It would be, right? It would yeah, be a universal yeah, one. Yeah, I'm not sure if they had Walter Lance yet or not. Okay. Leonard Malton might know. Yep. He's, he's big on that. Send, send your cards and letters, if you know, to, That's right. to us at Belong Dead Studios here. Probably uh, something wildly inappropriate and racist. Oh, yes, I'm sure. Almost certainly <laughs> racist. Almost certainly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, Buddy's Picture Show. Did we talk about that oh, before? I don't know if we covered that one. With the... Uh, the dirty fuck line in oh it. i think we did talk about yeah, that that's uh, right anyway all right so there we go there we uh, go yeah um follow us on facebook follow us on no i don't know you did you have more no i'm good oh, okay i'm good follow us on uh face space and my book and oh man there we, you gotta, go. I, we gotta get a myspace going <laughs> a spine-tingling, nerve-shattering podcast featuring all your favorite monsters. You won't believe your ears when you listen to Monster Kid Radio. 
Here your host, Derek M. Cook, and his ever-rotating stable of guests discuss your favorite classic and sometimes not-so-classic monster movies. Subscribe to Monster Kid Radio through iTunes or Stitcher, or visit monsterkidradio.net before the next weekly episode of Monster Kid Radio. Go through the archives for interviews with Sarah Karloff, Victoria Price, and Joel Hodgson. Listen to the discussions about movies like Creature from the Black Lagoon, Island of Terror, and King Kong. And don't forget convention coverage from Monster Bash and the H.P. Lovecraft Film Festival, Classic Monsters, Modern Talk, and the head of Rondo Hatton, only on Monster Kid Radio. Radio. Thank you.